Hey guys, uh, today uh, I am going to install a Pioneer um, AVH 4200 NEX head unit uh, in my 2016 STI. Um, if you saw the video I did a little over a year ago, I had pu already put in an amp, sub, and speakers, but I kept the factory head unit. Um, so today we're going to switch that out. Um, first thing we want to do, of course, is disconnect the battery. Next, uh, we'll go inside the car and we'll start taking out the head unit. Okay, so the first thing you got to do to take the factory radio out is to pull out this air conditioning vents. Um, I put down some painter's tape and then a little duct tape on top of that to help protect my trim so I don't scuff it up. Okay, once you got this popped out, you got to undo these two wires under here, which are a little bit of a pain to get undone. So there's a little piece on the top of them you have to push down to pull them out, but unless you got really small fingers, it's kind of hard to get in there. Actually, this one, I'm going to grab some needle nosers. Okay, I got the needle nosers. With these, I'm able to get in and, and pinch that little clip and pull this one out. You can then pull out the whole vent system. Let me get that out of the way. Next, not sure if you can see them in the camera, but there's two 10 millimeter bolts uh, above the radio. So next I think we have to come in, there's actually screws that hold this radio in. I mean you think at this point you'd be able to pull it out. You can't. There are screws on, on the other side. Um, so we're going to have to take off some of this dash components over here and take that glove box out here so we can access that. So let me go reposition for that. Okay, to access this screw on the side of the radio we got to first pop out this little piece here and undo the Phillips head screw right here let me set these aside then we need to pull out, there's some clips here, this whole piece. Now it's probably just easier if we go ahead and unplug these things so we can get this out of our way. Again, just like the other thing, you've got to find the little tab to push in, and then this will slide out. Um, let's see. Okay, so there's another Phillips screw down in this corner here we need to undo. Okay, so I don't know if you can see this, but right here there's a little metal tab and there's six of these on the bottom. So to get this off, you need, well, actually before we can take this off, we need to pry off. There's another little trim piece on the right side. I don't know how well you can see that, but you can get your hands under and just kind of pry it and pull it back. See, it just has a couple snaps. Now this piece we can come down 
and then up. Oh, there we are. So you can see how it has these tabs along the bottom here. So now we can access the screw. This one's a bit tricky because it's not a straight shot. And I'll reposition the camera and try to move this. Um, it's back up here. And probably going to need to get an extension on the ratchet with a swivel. So let me grab that. All right, sorry, sorry for the shakiness here, but I'm going to handhold this just so I can show you. So I guess I'll step back. You can see where we are under the steering wheel column. And there's my socket with a swivel. And it's attached to the screw, which I have a little blue tape around, so hopefully you can see that a little better. But that's where it is, so we got to unscrew this, pull that out. Uh, be careful not to drop that screw as you're bringing it out because be a little bit of a pain to retrieve it So I'll go ahead and pull this screw out now Okay, so now on this side We need to pull the glove box out so we bring it down you just pop this little piece off here and then squeeze the top pieces to drop it down and Then it should slide right out so so I don't think I'm going to be able to get it with the camera, but the same kind of 10 millimeter screw is straight back there. Um, you got to really dig your head all the way in here to see it, but it is a straight shot. So I think we can just use our straight socket and get that one out of there. So. Once I got it way loose, I just used this magnet here to reach in and kind of turn it the last little bit and pull it out. So now let's reposition the camera and I think we're ready to actually pull that radio out of there. Okay, so now that we got the two screws on either side of the radio pulled out, uh, it's now just held in by clips along with the air conditioning assembly so we need to pull out this whole thing together and as we start to get it out looks like we're being held in by some of the wires so looks like I'm gonna have to reach back here and start unplugging Okay, so this one is two pieces, so there's a little clip here, and clip there, and another one at the bottom. And I'm not quite sure what's holding that guy in there. And then finally down at the bottom we have the air conditioning control. I think that's it. So we're out. So as you can see, that's what the back of the radio looks like. Um, these two here that were up here had me a little confused because I thought that was all one plug. So I was looking for the clip in the middle, but turns out it's two plugs. So you got a clip here and a clip here you have to push down. Um, the rest of them all come out pretty easy. And then the air conditioning control at the bottom there. Um, so let me set this aside. And now I can start detangling. You know, a lot of this is the wiring I had done before. So now I'm going to need to kind of decipher what's what and start plugging in the new radio. So before I can really tackle um, all the wiring of the head unit, I need to get all the wires to the head unit that I need. So I need to add uh, RCA cables for my sub to run from the head unit all the way back to the trunk where my sub amp is. Um, so we're going to pull out the seat, we're going to pull out this trim, uh, pull out the trim here, um, and basically pull the carpet back a little bit so we can run the carpet, uh, on the carpet, 
run the wire to the trunk. And then uh, missed one of the panel pieces here, so I need to pull that out. Um, but um, I need to pull this weather stripping back. I'm going to need to do it on the other side of this pillar as well so then we can just kind of pop this piece out. Um, and then basically we're just going to remove the trim on the front the same way. Um, then I'm going to run the wire uh, back to my sub amp. Okay, so now I'm going to pull up the trim here in the front. and it, Again, it's just snapped into place. So again, you can see the snaps here and here, here and here, and this, well, yeah, I think it's just there's two. Get that out of the way. And now again, we need to pull this weather stripping back to up above this piece, which we're going to need to pry out. Get the rest of this. So here's this piece and you can see again it has four different clips, some up here, up here, up here, you know, and down at the bottom. So with all of this out, we should now be able to basically pull back or you got to lift this up again kind of snapped into place and pull back and expose the wiring and you can see the wires that I had run when I originally installed the amp so basically I need to remove this kick panel here and then I need to run this wire down and through here so I'm gonna run that wire and then we'll come back Okay, so I just finished running the RCA wires for the subwoofers, which are these blue wires here. And I just ran them along the wires I had already installed before when I originally installed my amp and speakers. So it's behind the dash there. You know, it tucks under. Runs along, you know, under the carpet. And you can see it a little bit better here. You know, so it runs along under the seat and then it pops up here and plugs into my amplifier um, um, there. So got the sub wire hooked up. I have two more wires I need to get installed. Uh, one is the microphone wire for the hands free phone. Um, and then the other is running the HDMI cable under that center console to the um, uh, arm, uh, the port, the little uh, box under the armrest. So we'll start working on that now. Okay, now I'm going to try and remove some of this center console so that I can hopefully run an HDMI cable from the head unit back to the uh, little, I don't even know what you call it, a little box here under the armrest. So to remove this, they're actually 
two screws under this little mat. So I'm gonna pull this mat out and you can see we got two screws right there. So we're gonna unscrew those. And then I think we have to kind of unsnap the boot here from the parking brake. And I think there's a screw underneath that uh, that after we do, we can then pull it out. So let's give this a try. They are 10 millimeter, I mean they're Phillips head, but they're also 10 millimeter, so Let me get a better grip on it with this. There we go. Now So that pops up, and I don't know if you can see it, but right here is the little Phillips head. And now I am hoping the rest of this just snaps out. Yep, there we go. So I'm gonna see, just to avoid taking out all of this, I'm gonna see if I can't simply snake the HDMI cable from here back to where I can reach it in the back. If I can't do that, we'll have to pull all this out as well. And we're gonna have to drill some kind of hole in the back there to poke the HDMI cable through, but figure that out once we get the cable back there. Okay, so uh, I wasn't having much luck fishing uh, the wire underneath here. Um, so I actually just went ahead and, and if you just pull up at the base here and then kind of get the edges and pull it straight back, this will snap out. Um, so now I should have room to run this HDMI cord up through here. Okay, so now I got my HDMI cord back here so I'm going to zip tie this to keep it out of the way of everything and then I'm going to figure out a way to put a hole in the back little glove box whatever you want to call that under the armrest um, and this HDMI cable is what should let me run um, the uh, Pioneer's app radio features basically mirroring uh, the screen of my phone to the screen on the Pioneer. So I'll go zip tie that down. Okay, so I was able to run this HDMI cable down under the center console and then I drilled a little hole. Can't really see the hole in the, in the side there where the HDMI cable comes through. Um, so the goal, and hopefully this is going to work, is the existing stock USB port will also be tapped into the uh, new radio. So I have a little six inch cable that runs from that to the Apple um, here to the Apple HDMI converter. The HDMI runs into that and then it runs to this little extension cord. So hopefully all of this will tuck away in here. And the only thing sticking out will be this one cable that will allow me to run Waze and other apps on the new Pioneer. Um, the other good thing about the way I've done this, at least I hope, is that if I don't like the app radio and I end up liking CarPlay better, I can simply plug straight into that factory USB port and run Apple CarPlay. So last thing I got to do is run the mic wire up to the dash, up to the visor, and then hopefully get everything wired up. Okay, I have run the uh, hands-free microphone here um, up to the visor 
run the wire down the A pillar under the dash and up to here. So now we have hopefully all the wires we need to get everything hooked up. Uh, got our RCAs for our subs, front, rear, um, and sub RCAs. Got the little mic wire, uh, which is right here. Um, so now what I need to do is I have this harness, which um, in the prior video I made on kind of setting up the wiring um, from ASICS that incorporates the, let me pull it out here, the plug for the steering wheel control module, um, which is just a little black box that this will get plugged into. Um, and so this, this I've already pre-wired up. Um, I just need to now connect the power and the ground and the illumination to the harness I have here. Now, um, here we have the main kind of speaker and power har harness, which is a 10 pin plug. Um, and so I've got this little module plugged into it. Um, and then I've got these wires here. Um, that I need to tap into so they're colored kind of the standard way the yellow wire is the constant power the red is the ignition power um, the orange is the illumination wire um, the black is the ground and uh, I think these are like power antenna or something I don't think I need these I gotta double check that um, Um, and then this is what plugs into the white plug here from the ASICS uh, adapter. Um, this is picking up the rear view camera um, and the steering wheel controls um, and um, tying it into this little black plug here, which again goes into the ASICS module. Um, so I'm, I'm going to do some soldering, uh, connecting up some of these wires, and then I'll show you guys, uh, you know, what I've done and, and the final um, plugging everything in. Okay, so I think I have got all the wires uh, soldered up. So I have soldered the illumination wire. Um, this comes out of this, uh, I think it was the Metra um, adapter. Although, uh, this one is actually from my original installation. Uh, it was done by, I think it was like AE64.com or something. Um, he actually custom makes some pretty nice harnesses, but you can get the same basic Molex plug um, from Metra, uh, and, and I'll put that in the details. Um, and basically it has the speaker outputs here, and then it has your red power, yellow constant power, and your orange illumination. So I've soldered these up to the appropriate wires on the plug for uh, the Pioneer. So I got the illumination wire, got my accessory wire, got my constant power wire, um, and got all the grounds. Um, so now what I'm going to do is, oh and I've plugged in the access steering wheel control module. Um, so, and that steering wheel control module sends its signal out via this little plug that'll plug into the radio. So, I think what I'm going to do now is I'm going to clean all this stuff up, um, wire tie it up, make sure it fits, um, and then we'll start plugging everything in. Alright, so I've uh, tied it up the wires as best I can. And um, I just want to go over a couple other uh, little uh, points you might want to remember. Um, as I said earlier, I, I want to incorporate the factory USB plug under this armrest. So that cable looks like that, if you can see that. Um, and so I bought this adapter that hopefully is going to fit this. Yep. Uh, that gives me a USB plug that will plug into the radio. Um, I'm going to tape that up real quick. Um, 
I also um, got an adapter for the radio antenna. Um, and it looks like this. Um, again, I'll try to put all the um, part numbers in the description because um, a lot of this stuff doesn't actually say like for Subaru. This says like for 09 Lexus and above. Um, but it definitely appears to fit. So I think this is the satellite uh, antenna here, the blue one. Um, I don't plan on using that. Um, and then so that plugs in there um, and then that gives me the antenna lead um, for the Pioneer radio um, there's this one single wire here that was on the factory radio and I'll be honest I don't know what this is for um, I'm not sure if it's some kind of ground uh, <laughs> if somebody knows maybe they can comment um, but uh, so now what I'm gonna do is actually start plugging all of this into the radio. Um, I don't really think I'm going to be able to film this because I don't think I'm going to be able to get the camera at an angle to really show you what I'm doing, but um, you know, I'll just go over quickly some of the other wires. So we got the access steering wheel control module with its plug that goes into the radio, the auxiliary inputs which come from this harness here, um, which was part of that big harness which I've plugged into the factory system here. Um, the backup camera, you know, the auxiliary auto, uh, obviously my RCAs to my amps, um, the antenna wire, the USB wire, and of course don't want to forget my HDMI cable. Um, so I'm going to start plugging away. Alright, so last night I hooked everything up, plugged everything in, uh, turned on, you know, put the battery back on, turned the car on. Radio immediately came on, music started playing, so I was, you know, happy, thinking everything's great, everything's working. Um, and then I realized the reverse camera isn't working. And fiddled with it for a long time, um, you know, couldn't figure out anything out. And then finally found my problem, with, which is embarrassingly pretty simple, but I just want to show you so you guys don't make the same mistake. Uh, on the back here, there are four... RCA inputs. The two in the bottom are for the subwoofer um, and I knew one of the top ones was for the remote camera input and as you can see the one on the left, or I'm hoping you can see, has a yellow inside which typically denotes video. Um, so that's what I plugged it into. Uh, turns out that was wrong. As you're looking at the back of the head unit, it's the top right plug for the rear view camera input. Um, so I corrected that today and now that's working. Um, the other thing I wanted to show you before I actually plug the radio in is where I've mounted the bracket. I'm not actually sure this is correct, but hopefully it is. Um, I have it at the very last, uh, as you can see here, um, of these little, imp little sections where you can put it in. I have it at the very last so that these things are all the way towards the front. Um, I'm hoping that's right and it'll give me the right look I want. If not, of course, we'll have to adjust it. But uh, if it is right, you'll, 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 you'll know where we started from. Um, so. Um, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, get this thing all plugged in and then we'll come back. All right, so I was able to get all the wires tucked in behind there, uh, get the radio mounted up. I have not yet tried to put on the uh, bezel uh, to see if I have the depth correct, so hopefully that's right. Uh, but I did want to show you back in there on the top right, you can see a little piece of metal. That's the original mounting bracket, and there's one on the left side as well, which I kind of pushed out of the way. Um, those kind of can easily pinch your wires and are kind of sharp, so you just really need to make sure um, that none of the wires are getting pinched back there uh, when you put it in. Um, the other thing I wanted to show you is the access steering wheel control module. Um, when I uh, plugged everything in, uh, this it's supposed to auto-detect um, the steering wheel controls and automatically program itself. Um, 
bunch of videos I've watched with older WRXs and other cars. Everyone's like, yeah, you plug it in, it auto detects. Um, I don't know if it's just me, but I, I think on the 2016 to newer and in talking to tech support there, um, it doesn't seem to always uh, auto detect. Uh, so you do have to go through a manual process. It's not that big of a deal. Um, you, you do need their instructions and it, it kind of walks you through and it, it shows you for each uh, button. Um, but basically what you have to do is push uh, this button. Um, make sure you can see that. This one down here in the bottom right is the light. Let me pull that out a little bit. So that one right there where my thumb is, that's the light. And that one right there is the reset button. So you have to push and hold that reset button for like 10 seconds until it blinks slowly. Um, that puts it into manual program mode. Uh, then you push the up volume and hold it for like 7 seconds until the light goes solid and then let it go. Um, then you repeat that process for each of these buttons and it has to be in this order uh, that they have here. Um, so you push volume down, hold it until the light goes green, let it go. You push seek up, hold it until the light goes green, let it go. When you get down to buttons like preset up, preset down, and power that aren't on the steering wheel, you just hit the up volume to skip those buttons. Um, and one nice feature, and I'll show you when I get it all hooked up, is that the seek button or the right arrow in the steering wheel control, um, if you push it once in the radio, it goes to the next preset. But if you hold it, uh, it goes into seek mode. So that's kind of nice. Um, but it was a little bit of a hassle having to do that um, programming. Um, and the buttons here, so this like menu button, there was no corresponding button for it. Um, I just made it the band button to like change between AM and FM. And this return button here, uh, I haven't been able to get that to do anything. Um, but all the other buttons work, the on hook, off hook, the speak to, you know, talk, um, the source, uh, the mute button. Um, and I'll show you this again when I have it up as well. It's kind of annoying is that it doesn't actually shut the volume off. It only reduces it a little bit. And even though the, I'm sorry, the Pioneer does have a setting to let you change the mute function to complete shut off, that only applies to the button right here on the actual stereo and doesn't actually work with the steering wheel controls. It still only reduces the volume, doesn't shut it off. Um, but uh, let me get it uh, fully set up and then we'll go over some of the functions. So I had the radio all plugged in, thought everything was working, um, but the mute button for the steering wheel control was not working. So I called uh, tech support. They said the issue is that the resistance used for that button is super low, and so their processor can't read it without a really, really clean ground with almost no resistance. So what they said to do is, out of this 28-pin Molex, pin number 23, which is right here coming out there, this ground wire um, on the coming in from the factory is this yellow wire. Now I just cut this wire here and they said by bypassing all of these different connections will improve the resistance. So I have a ground wire right here that I mounted straight to the chassis. So I'm gonna connect this wire to this yellow wire and then to the two ground wires going into the access controller. Um, according to them, this skips all these other little connections which are built in, um, thereby reducing resistance, so hopefully it'll be able to read the very low resistance of that mute switch, um, and hopefully this will work. So I'm going to give it a try. So, uh, I, I guess a, a couple of things. Um, the backup camera works, um, which is really nice. Um, the USB cable uh, works, uh, the factory one, using that harness. Um, let me turn that down. Um, 
the steering wheel audio controls for the, for the most part work. So my volume up and down works. Um, let me get to. Um, so. So my volume works. Um, you know, up and down works. Um, the next, you know, seek and 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 uh, reverse work um, uh, and and what I really like um, is the speak to talk button works so if I click that Siri call H&H &H, it calling H&H &H, company main it, you know it works really well very quick um, and that um, so that feature works really well, and the and the hang up and you know on hook and off hook button works. Uh, the source button works. You know, lets me switch um, to the different sources on the radio. Um, so I'm hitting the source button right now, switching to HD radio. Um, and like I said, the um, the next and forward but buttons work. And what's nice is when I tap them once. Like right now, it's on preset one. If I hit the forward button, it goes to preset two. But if I hold it, it actually goes to seek mode. Um, so it's kind of nice to have that option. Um, um, the menu button up on the top of the steering wheel control uh, didn't really have a corresponding control. So I just mapped it to be the main, I'm sorry, the, the band button. So when I hit it, it switches to FM2, FM3, and then to AM. Um, the return button, uh, I tried to map it to the play enter button, but it doesn't seem to actually do anything. Um, so overall, the steering wheel controls work. Uh, I, I'm a little bummed about the mute button not working, although it did work a little bit and then it didn't, so maybe I'll figure that out at some point. Um, and haven't had a chance to fiddle around too much with the radio and, and fully set everything up, but, um, you know, it definitely sounds good. Um, um. know how that sounded on on the recording might might be a little overwhelming that was really loud um, and still pretty audible it was getting slightly distorted there but um, really sounds pretty nice if you hadn't seen my original uh, video I have um, two 10 inch JL audio subs and a, and a custom box I made behind the back seats and I'm pretty sure they are JL six and a half in the in the rear doors they're coax in the front, there are six and a half JLs with the tweeters mounted up in the dash um, with a JL 900 uh, slash 5 uh, amp. So I'm pretty sure that's 100 watts to each corner and 500 to the sub. Um, so I'll, I'll do a longer, uh, I, I might do another video kind of reviewing all the functions of, of the um, head unit and, and how I like it. I do like and, and one of my big pet peeves of why I didn't w wanted to get rid of the factory unit was it took so long to recognize your phone. You know, you'd get in the car, you'd start it up, you'd plug your phone in, and it would take like a minute before it actually started playing music. Um, this pretty much recognizes it right away. Um, and the phone features themselves work great. A um, little annoying that when you turn it on, it kind of goes through that startup screen. Um, but... Um, uh, and also a little, uh, uh, the app radio feature, it works functionally, like with the HDMI cable I ran. Um, and I haven't fiddled with it too much, but 
little I have fiddled, wasn't too excited about it. It looks like it's literally just mirroring your screen. Um, it's not giving you the full controls and, and this kind of thing. Um, but, uh, and, and, you know, the CarPlay for what it does is really nice. You know, you can check the emails, I'm sorry, messages. Um, you can use iHeartRadio and some other apps. Um, but, you know, again, my pet peeve here is the maps are their maps, not Waze like I'd like. Um, so, anyway, uh, I, I hope you guys uh, really like this. Actually, you know what I'll, I'll do? I'm going to hop out and, and I'll show you, just in case you hadn't seen the other one, just what the subs look like. Um, uh, so, let me do that real quick. Okay, so now we're going to take a look at the subs. So, let me drop down both of these. Hold on. So, you see I got two subs. Now, I don't have it in right now. I'll slide it in and show it to you. I have a panel that goes above the amp and the capacitor. And I kind of use that as a little storage space uh, in my trunk. Um, so, I'll, I'll show you how it looks from the trunk side. So from here, you know, I tried to keep it somewhat factory looking and still give me some space. Um, and then this is held in with magnets, drops down. And I have a carpeted tray that slides right here. Um, so I have that little storage space. So anyway, I, I, I hope you like the, um, the videos. Hope you found them useful. I hope that... I hope that you're able, you know, if anyone else is going to do an install like this, hopefully you grabbed some info that might help. Like I said, overall, I'm, I'm really happy with it. Um, uh, I like to I'll show you the backup camera. Okay, here, here we go. Uh, that's the backup camera. I haven't fully aligned the little, these little um, guides, parking guides are adjustable. I haven't finished aligning those. Um, but... You know, it automatically does it when you go into reverse. Um, you know, it comes on. Uh, so I like how, you know, to be able to retain that and have that work. Um, so again, ho hope you guys liked the video. Um, and if you didn't, just remember, you didn't pay for it and I wasn't paid to do it. Thanks.